we can't go to restaurants, and we're only shopping once a week if we have to. Some of the magic and fun and spontaneity of dinner time is inevitably lost. To restore it, we can introduce a bit of randomness. Today is day seven of Stay in the Make Do, and our project is going to be a dinner generator. We're going to tell our micro bit what ingredients we have, and it's going to invent a dish for us to cook. It might be horrible, but it won't be boring. All you'll need for this is your micro bit and battery pack. No extras or wires or anything fancy. We'll start with some setup and some theory. In the advanced menu, ta-da! We've got a category called arrays. Arrays are a way of making lists of things that the computer can understand and manipulate. We're going to make a text list and we're going to call it ingredients. Each value in the list has an associated position and the numbering starts at zero. So if I fill in a couple of examples here, Cheese is position zero, ham is position one, onion is position two, and so on. Later on, we can access the individual things we have stored in this array using this block. We tell it which array we're interested in and which position in that array, and it will fetch the value. For now, we're gonna make two more arrays called dishes and sides. Let me fill in a couple of examples. Our program is going to pick a number of ingredients, a dish to make with them, and a side to go with it. Think of it a bit like Mad Libs. It's going to say, make an ingredient, ingredient, dish with side. And it's going to do this when we press a button. So grab this on button A pressed. We want to pick a random one of the things from our list, and for that, we're going to need the random number generator from the math menu. But first, create three variables called number of ingredients, which dish, and which side. To pick a random number of ingredients, Let's set number of ingredients to pick random. Which will make number of ingredients a random number between 0 and 10. But 0 to 10 is not necessarily good for our purposes. So let's think about those bounds. We want at least one ingredient, so let's make the lower bound 1. What about the upper bound? What's the maximum number of ingredients we might want? Well, how many ingredients do we have? There's a block that will tell us. It's in arrays and then length of array. Which dish and which side are very similar, but with one important difference. This time we're picking the specific value we want, not the number of values. I said before, numbering in arrays starts at zero. So in this case, we want our random number to start at zero. Otherwise, we won't ever end up picking the first item on either of our lists. Just like the minimum is one lower than in the previous case, the maximum is also one lower than the previous case. If you have a list with three things, the length is three, one, two, three. But if the numbering starts at zero, zero, one, two, then the final item on the list is item two. So let's get something else from math. For 
from 0 to the length of the array minus 1. You might think we could have just counted how many things were in our arrays and put the actual numbers in. But doing it this way means we can change how many things are in our arrays and our program will still work. So as you run out of ingredients or stock up, you can change what's in the ingredients list and it doesn't matter. To display our randomly generated dinner, we'll need some show string blocks from BASIC. Start with a make A, and then we want to list our ingredients. This is the last tricky bit. Let's use a loop to do this. We'll keep adding ingredients until we've got to the right number of ingredients. So in here, the number of times we repeat, we want our variable number of ingredients. And each time we'll show the ingredient. So we get a show string block. But wait, what ingredients? We are not done with the random numbers. We know it's going to be an item from the ingredients array. Now we need to generate a random position again. You know the drill, between zero and one less than the length of the array. Now for the dish and the side, so we need some more show string blocks. We'll use this get value at block. And we've already picked which one we want. That's our variable, which dish. Now for the sides. With our variable, which side? Voila, random dinner except it disappears as soon as you're done reading it because if you press the button again, it generates a whole new dinner. So it would be better to create a variable to store the dinner idea if it's a good combination so you can look at it again. Create a variable called my dinner. Remember I said variables are like buckets? They can hold information and we can look back in later and change the info. Replace the first show string with a set my dinner to. You'll need this empty text box from the text menu to type make a. Now we want to add to the bucket. Here, where we're picking ingredients, we want to add each one to the bucket. So we need a set my dinner to in here. But caution, this block empties the bucket before it puts the new information in. We want to keep adding to the bucket. Go into text and find this join block. Then put your my dinner variable in the start and the ingredient in this part and stick it all back in here. What this means is whatever's in the bucket right now, add a bit of information on the end and then put the whole thing back in the bucket. We're going to use the same trick to get rid of these show string blocks down here, like so. but we do need to add one more show string block on the end to actually show all the contents of my dinner. Now, the big advantage you've got is this. Grab another on button pressed block and change it to B. Copy and paste this final block and clip it in. Now you can look at the dinner you generated as many times as you like. And if you don't like it, you can press button A to generate a new one. Give it a test. I've stored which
which dish and which side as variables, because I think it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. But that's not strictly necessary. If you want to make your program a bit more concise and streamlined, you can do what we've done in the loop and put the random numbers into the line. You also may have noticed that there's nothing stopping my program picking an ingredient multiple times. One extension would be to make sure it can only pick each ingredient once. But be warned, it's trickier than it sounds. Here's the code I wrote to do that. I'll put a link in the description so you can download that code and investigate. But in the meantime, remember, stay in, make do, and make dinner. <laughs>